I tracked the bloom times of all of the flowers in my garden for an entire year to create the ultimate list of long blooming perennials in my own yard. The results were actually quite surprising to me. My name is Amy and over at prettypurpledoor.com I help home gardeners design four season landscapes that are uniquely you. So in this list I have a lot of awesome long blooming perennials. Many of these are native to the US or cultivars of native plants which are often referred to as native ours. All of the photos you'll see in this video are from my own garden unless otherwise noted, so let's get right into it. First up is butterfly weed. This grows in zones four through nine in full to part sun. This is a native milkweed that's one of the few host plants for the monarch butterfly. It's found in the wild from Maine to South Dakota to desert Southwest to Florida. Butterfly weed grows orange clusters of flowers from June through August. And in the fall, the upright seed pods crack open and the seeds spread with shiny hairs in the wind. And butterfly weed bloomed for 11 weeks in my garden. Next up is Catmint Walker's Low. This grows in zones four through nine in full to part sun. It's a mounding perennial with spicy fragrant leaves that makes a great border plant. It shows off small lavender bluish flowers for eight weeks from late spring through fall. This is one of my favorite plants in my garden. It smells great, it's always beautiful. And like I said, it bloomed for eight weeks with multiple reblooms in my garden. Next is Purple Coneflower. This grows in zones three through eight in full to part sun. It's a perennial that's native to most prairies and meadows and open woods of the central to southeastern U.S. Purple coneflowers are a must for any cottage style garden, I think. Uh, they stand pretty tall at about four feet high and the flowers have pinkish purple petals that surround a large brown protruding center. The blooms last from mid to late summer through most of the fall. This bloomed for 10 weeks in my garden. Next is Coreopsis and the variety that I have is called Early Sunrise. This grows in zones three through nine in full to part sun. It grows naturally in dry and rocky soils throughout North America. Early Sunrise is a native cultivar of Coreopsis, which is native to Central and Eastern North America. The skinny stems are about a foot high and are topped with bright yellow, very sunny, sunshiny flowers that can bloom for more than 12 weeks from summer through fall. This bloomed for over 12 weeks in my garden. I just love it. It's very, very happy flower and it's just constantly blooming. Next up is Crepe Myrtle, Black Diamond, Pure White. I'm I'm saying here zones six through nine, but we had actually a cold frost that almost nearly killed this in zone six. So I think zone six is a little pushing it, maybe zone seven through nine. Uh, this grows in full sun and it bloomed for 11 weeks in my garden. This one's technically a tree or a very large shrub, but the white ruffled flowers against this dark maroon foliage, it makes it really a beautiful contrast that can't be ignored. There's also ones that are black diamond pure red, I believe it's called, and black diamond pure pink or something like that. So you can get the flower blooms in different colors. And this bloomed for 11 weeks from summer through fall in my garden. But like I said, it got nipped with some frost. So I'm not sure about its hardiness in zone six at this point. Next up is Daylily Fragrant Returns. This grows in zones five through nine in full sun to part sun. It blooms from early to late summer. These are bright yellow lilies with green sword-like foliage. It's almost like a grassy texture and they prefer full sun and moist, well-drained soil and they don't really care for a ton of fertilizer or anything like that. They grow in kind of crappy conditions, if you will. They bloom all summer long with very little care. They kind of deadhead themselves and everything. And this bloomed for over 12 weeks in my garden. So very easy to care for plant, very beautiful, has beautiful foliage and also blooms for a really long time. Next up is Joe Pie Weed and the variety that I have is called Baby Joe. This grows in zones two through nine. So it's very, very cold hardy and it grows in full sun to part sun. A baby Joe is a native cultivar of Joe Pie Weed, which is native to Eastern and Central North America. It's a great choice as a late season statement for your garden since it blooms late summer through fall. It has four foot long stems and this is just the baby Joe has four foot long stems. So the actual native Joe Pie Weed will actually be much taller than this and green lance shaped foliage and the flowers at the top are made of little florets and bracts in a dusty rose color. It's it's sort of like if you're familiar with Autumn Joy Sedum, this reminds me of Autumn Joy Sedum on a much larger scale. Uh, that's sort of the look of this plant uh, without the succulent leaves. This bloomed for almost eight weeks in my garden. It's just very beautiful. It gets so tall and it creates kind of like a cozy hideaway for places. So if you have a space like I have a circular brick patio in my back and I have this Joe Pie Weed 
kind of in front of that circular patio so it sort of secludes that area a lot more. I like how the height does that for you and it's beautiful to look at. Next up is Rose of Sharon. The variety that I have is called Azuri Blue Satin. Uh, Rose of Sharon's grow zones five through nine in full sun. And this is a large and hardy shrub that produces big, bright, purplish blue flowers. So the flower color is very different, this particular Rose of Sharon. It's almost a blue. I have another one called Blue Chiffon. That's a little bit lighter color than this Azuri blue, but it is a true blue as well. It's almost like a periwinkle blue. The flowers of the Azuri blue have these gorgeous wine red streaks in the veins of the petal. And these bloom for 11 weeks in my garden from midsummer to fall. I just want to point out too that Rose of Sharon can be an invasive species in a lot of places. This is actually a sterile cultivar. So if you love Rose of Sharon, but you don't want to plant something that's invasive, you may want to look at one of these sterile varieties like Azuri Blue Satin or Blue Chiffon, or I think there's also a Pink Chiffon that you can look at. Next up is Siberian Bugloss Silver Heart. This grows in zones three through eight in part sun to shade. So this is a good shade one. It blooms in the spring and it's a herbaceous perennial with beautiful year round foliage. If you're a hostel lover, you're gonna love this plant too. It has white and light green heart shaped leaves. And in the spring, it grows small, delicate blue flowers and they sort of just kind of float and dance over top of the flower, similar to like what a hosta or a hucaro would do. And they're just the truest, most beautiful blue and they last a long time in my garden. The blooms of Siberian Bugloss lasted over seven weeks. Next up is Spanish Bluebells. These grow in zones three through eight in part sun to shade. And this one is a bulb with foliage similar to that of a daffodil, but they're topped with purplish bell-shaped flowers. They're hardy and deer resistant and will bloom for eight weeks in the spring for you. So I really like this foliage. The foliage also kind of reminds me a little bit of the daylily that we talked about earlier, but a very beautiful flower. And I love that it takes that part sun to shade as well. Next is Spiderwort. This grows in zones four through nine in full sun through shade, very tolerant of a lot of different conditions. Spiderwort is native from Southern Canada to South America, including the United States. Its flowers come anywhere from a bluish purple to white with sort of a purple center and have an interesting cycle. They last one day. Every bloom opens in the morning, it closes by midday, and then it will wilt and turn into a jelly-like fluid in my garden. Spiderwort bloomed continuously for eight weeks and then it rebloomed throughout the fall when I didn't even expect it. A lot of people will say that spiderwort is invasive. It is not invasive, just gonna fix that term for you a little bit. Invasive means that it's not native and it's taking over native habitat. So never call spiderwort invasive. It's just an aggressive spreader. It spreads by underground rhizomes, so it'll fill in a patch or an area. I find that it doesn't spread as quickly or as aggressively in the shade. The plants that I have in the shade, they fill in a little bit more each year. They grow, they're great to divide, they're great to share with friends. I really love this plant, especially if you have a larger space to kind of fill with a ground cover of some kind. Next is Veronica Pink Potion. This grows in zones four through eight in full to part sun. And Veronica is also known as Spike Speedwell. This mound forming perennial adds vertical interest to your garden with baby pink flower wands that bloomed for over 12 weeks in my garden from late spring into October. So this is a really cool plant. It reminds me of a salvia, but it has a bit later of a bloom time. So if you do have salvias in your garden, this Veronica pink potion can kind of extend the blooms times of some other flowers in your garden that you may love like salvia. Next is Yarrow Apricot Delight. This grows zones four through nine in full sun. It blooms early to late summer. It bloomed for eight weeks in my garden. Apricot delights a cultivar of yarrow, which grows naturally in the United States. This plant bloomed with clusters of dusty rose, almost an apricot colored flower, a really unique color to the flower. And it blooms through summer and also produced multiple reblooms throughout the year. Once the flowers faded, the seed heads were also really attractive in the garden, so I left them going. But again, this one bloomed for eight straight weeks in my garden and then continue to rebloom throughout the season. So you may be wondering how I actually tracked the bloom times of these perennials in my garden. And a long time ago over at papergardworkshop.com, I downloaded a bloom chart 
and I was able to fill in all the plants and then kind of uh, measure when they started, when they ended, and then I just kind of tallied the results at the end. I did check on the website and I didn't see it there anymore, so I did create a bloom chart for you if you wanna kind of go through this process and you mark down all your plants and then you can tell how long each one bloomed in a particular season. I'll leave a link to that bloom chart in the description below so you can grab that. Just a note that these plants may not bloom for the same length of time where you live as where I live and I'm in Northeast Pennsylvania. They may not even perform the same way for me next year and that's just the joy and the pain of gardening. Uh, a lot can depend on your conditions, where you live, along with the climate in any given year. Regardless of this disclaimer, I still believe that these are all excellent long blooming plants that you should consider adding to your garden. So here are some of the takeaways that I've had while doing this process. Over half of the plants on this long bloomer list are natives or native cultivars, which is really fun and exciting to see. This is great news because there's so many benefits to planting natives in your garden. I was also surprised that many of the plants that I thought bloomed for a very long time actually weren't at the top of this list. I think that when you love a particular plant, it can kind of really skew your results of how long it's actually lasting. All the links to the plants mentioned in this video are in the description below if you want to check them out or even purchase them online. And if you like this video, you would also like my other plant list videos. I'll leave a link to the playlist right here and I'll see you over in the next video.